Hey guys, it's Akeem here, back with some more Demir on Earth, our opening hand. We're on the play. Four mana, bounce spell, two draw spells, not a single creature, so that is a mulligan. Now we're looking at a two card hand. Two card hand. A seven card hand with two mana. Uh, we got turn one Raptor, turn two Strix, and military intelligence follow up on the play, so that's, that's a pretty strong start. We're going to keep this. It's always nice when you can curve uh, Raptor into Strix. It's, uh, it's uh, one of the strongest starts this deck can do. So it's nice to uh, it's nice to see it show up on the camera, especially on play. Hopefully we don't see uh, Mountain Shock. We're, we're looking at a Plains into Elixir of Immortality. Uh, we're playing against Mikado Ani. I have no idea if I'm even saying that remotely close to correct, but he's on. He, he could be on the uh, on the life gain plan. You know the whole uh, black white thing. So we're just going to drop these tricks into play. Evolve the Raptor up to a one two. Swing for one, and then next turn it's very likely we just uh, we just drop the military intelligence and. Uh, and start drawing bucketfuls of cards with our with our two flyers, you know, pending uh, whether or not our opponent has removal. So we'll just get it back, uh, get in for one, and uh, and pass it back to Mikado over there, and see if he's on the mono white plan or if he's got the swamp uh, swamp coming into play, which is generally to be expected from the life gain decks. But uh, he's just playing mono white by the looks of it, and he drops into Johnny's Pride Mate two two, and whenever he gains life, he can put a plus one plus one counter on it. So picked up another Strix. So I actually think that uh, I actually think I'm going to um, get this into play right now before the military intelligence and just advance the board a bit further. So I get six power in the air at this point. So we're going to swing for four here and uh, and get him down to 15 and then just drop the swamp. And so, go. so this was a strong start. Uh, I gotta say, starting off with uh, Raptor Strix Strix, it's, uh, you know, we got six power in the air already before our opponent's third turn. Now he's playing a lone missionary though, so he's gonna recoup four of the of the damage that we've done to him. So he's back up to 19 life. He gets a plus one, plus one counter on his pride mate. Uh, I've got a death toucher though. That, uh, John, no, I've got a vapor snag in hand actually. If, if I didn't have, a, and I've got a voyage then. If I didn't have a bounce spell in hand, I would I'd probably trade with that because it can get out of hand. But I can bounce it to take all the counters off it and uh, and make him replay it. So I think uh, let's see what we pick up. But it's definitely going to be uh, it's definitely going to be military intelligence right here, so that we can draw a card when we swing with the with the three of these guys, and we'll have a bounce spell open at the very least, depending on uh, what we pick up. So here we're going to draw an extra card. It is a viscera dragger, which is actually pretty solid because what I'll do is I'll put the island into play. I will have Voyage's End open, and if I decide that I don't need to use it, uh, I can just cycle the dragger and draw another card. So let's see, our opponent's on four mana now. Uh, he could be playing Angelica Chord at this point, which is not something that I want to see considering he, he has an elixir in play. He's playing Rock's Faith Mender, so that doubles all of his life gain. So uh, when he cracks his elixir, he's going to gain ten life. Um, I'm not actually looking forward to that. So he's coming in for five here. He's actually putting uh, us on, a, you know, sort of a, a bit of a clock here. But I've got six here. So I think honestly, what I do here is I voyage his end. This, and then I'm going to cycle this, and unearth it. I don't need a raptor at this point in time. I will uh, put that on the bottom. Yeah, I'm just going to take the 5 and go to 12, but I'll cycle the Dragger and unearth it. That'll evolve my Raptor, and I will swing for 10. Bringing him down to 3, and I'll draw a card. So let's see, let's see. Picked up another land. That is excellent, actually, because now I'll be able to hold open the Vapor Snag through all of this. So let's cycle it, make sure we keep open black mana. I don't know why, which... The game wants me to spend 2 black mana to cycle this thing. Um, you know, I'm going to cycle it this way. So, so I can actually afford to, you know, pay the unearth cost. Picked up another swamp. Now we're going to unearth it, and uh, that's going to evolve the raptor up to a three-four. And then we've got the three-three in play. And this is getting in for ten. And I'm going to draw a card, and we have vapor snag open. And we picked up another vapor snag, which is excellent. But he's got the uh, he's got the five life gain, you know. So he's he's on a virtual eight life here. I imagine he'll replay the Faith Mender, but he can't. He can't play that and and crack this because that'll take six mana. For him to do that. 
So let's see what he does. If he just replays that or if he's got something else, he's going to play a Bane Slayer Angel. Which doesn't bother me in the slightest because now he's dead. Oh well, yeah, he swings. And uh, we will just Vapor Snag the Bane Slayer and that is the game. It's going to take him to two, but he's completely tapped out. We go down to seven. Yeah, that's, I was wondering why the game was taking so long there, but he, he knows what's up. So there we go, nice quick start there. Raptor into into double strix, into military intelligence, with just and then just some bounce spells to keep the opponent from uh, from executing his game plan. And uh, and that's Demir on Earth right there. That's pretty much... Uh, that's how the deck is supposed to operate. Of course, it's never it's never that smooth. You know, all, you, your draws are never uh, never perfect like that. But uh, you know, when you get a chance to to have a pretty much a nut draw on the play, it's always good to it's always good to see. So let's see if we can't get another game here now. That one is not going to let me in. So let's try number one. Going to have some connection issues here. I've been, I've been getting pretty lucky, you know, on camera when I'm trying to get into a. Uh, into a second game. Here's a little glitch with the menu. If you get stuck, you actually got to go into the deck wheel and back out of it. Which is pretty fucking annoying. It makes me wonder if anyone ever playtests these games. But anyway, let's go into a ranked match. Uh, will I try it? No games found, so let's try and create one. There's gotta be someone out there who wants to lose a game of Magic. Come on, guys. Hop in the lobby. Still nobody. Uh, Rabelia, say hey, I've played against this guy a multitude of times. He's always playing something different, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> I think he was on my friends list at one point. Maybe it was back in Duels 2014. But uh, you know, I recognize the gamer tag. I've seen him. Uh, I've seen him online and played and dueled against him a fair bit. Alrighty, come on now, game load up. It's only it's only a card game. We're not playing Call of Duty or something here. Uh, what do I have? A Vapor Snag, a Military Intelligence, and a Brackwater on the play, so I don't have a creature until the third turn. Not too excited about that. Here we're looking at a Strix into Brackwater with Intelligence potential on the, on the turn after that, and we're on the play. So this is solid. Get the uh, get the gate into play and have it turn two Strix. Wish I had the turn one Raptor, obviously, but uh, can't not, can't have it all all the time. Our friend Rebellious is playing 68 cards by the look of it. 67 cards. He starts with a jungle shrine, which is the uh, the Naya land, red, white, and green. So let's get the get the two power flyer into play for two mana. I absolutely love this card, and it's uh, it's the main reason I'm playing black in this deck. Still playing black. I mean, it started off uh, it started off with uh, indulgent tormentors at the top, necromancers, assistants, dead reckonings, and all sorts of weird stuff. But uh, it's kind of morphed into this low curve thing, and most of the black ended up getting cut out of it. So let's just uh, let's just swing for two here. He still hasn't played anything. He played a mountain on his last turn, but didn't cast a spell. And now let's uh, let's drop the Brackwater in play. I love this guy. Four four for three mana. He hits hard, and most people won't block him. So he's kind of like a he's kind of like a burn spell, and he does a lot of damage coming out of the graveyard as well. So he's uh, surprisingly strong. So now he's taking a turn off to cultivate. So he's playing uh, he's playing a slow deck, probably ramp into bombs type of thing. Naya has a, a ton of bombs, obviously. So we picked up another land, which is, you know, not the greatest thing in the world. I'm going to play Military Intelligence here. I'm not going to play my land until after I draw a card off of the Intelligence, in case we pick up another gate. Uh, we might want to drop that into play tapped while we can. So Brackwater triggers. He's going away at the end of the turn. Military Intelligence triggers. We pick up a Pestermite, which is pretty solid, because we'll be able to tap down one of his threats once he finally starts playing them. I imagine we'll see the uh, I imagine we'll see the Bane Slayers and the Inferno Titans, Stormless Dragons, and all that sort of stuff from our friend Rebellious here. So he's casting an Elder of Laurels. She's a two-three, and uh, for four mana he can give target creature plus X plus X, where X is the number of creatures he controls. So with five mana here, um, um, I wonder if the play is to just unearth and come at him and save the Pestermite for when he plays a bigger threat. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, because I could pick up a two drop here and, uh, and still play something second main. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to unearth this, come at him for six more. If he doesn't block, he's down to six, so and we're going to draw another card here, which is another Pestermite, which is excellent because now when he uh, when he starts dropping the bombs, we can tap him down and get in with the evasive guys. So. 
pretty good. So we got a bounce spell and a couple of tappers. Still only uh, still only got the one creature on board, but he's on six life already. You know the Brack the Brackwater Elemental. He's uh, he's done eight damage for me, which is pretty uh, pretty excellent. I would hate to see an Infernal Titan here because that would nuke my Strix. We're looking at a Hunter's Prowess that gives his creature uh, plus three plus three and trample. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, draw that many cards. So we're just going to bounce that and just blow out his entire turn. So uh, Hunter's Prowess doesn't do anything. He taps out. And, uh, and he lost his creature in play. So he played a land. So we're going to get him down to three here now, unless he has a Righteous Blow. Picked up another land, which is not uh, not very good. Because we've, already, we've got six in play now and two more in hand. But we've got this... You know, I'd hate to see a Palaka Worm at this stage of the game. He's only got two green sources, though, from what I can, from what I can make out of his mana base over there. Yeah, he's got the, the Nile. He's playing Angelic Edict to exile the. Uh, so he paid five mana to deal at sorcery speed to deal with my two mana card. So now I'm going to flash in a Pestermite and tap down his Jungle Shrine. Actually, I'm going to untap one of my lands. Uh, if he doesn't have Shock, then he's dead. Yes. On tap, and then we'll flash in another pester might, and then tap down his land. So he has to have a shock right here. Yes, tap. So his only out right now is uh, is righteous blow. So let's find out if he has it. Trigger the intelligence. Doesn't look like he has it because I think he would have cast it by now. And now we just flash in two pester mites at the end of the turn and uh, and give him a good a good knocking. So. <laughs> Two pretty, uh, two pretty strong starts for this deck. I got uh, two wins in just 11 minutes. You know, started on the play both times with uh, Todd Hollow Strix on the uh, on the second turn, which is uh, one of the better ways this deck plays out. Strix is a really, uh, really good card. You know, two power flyer for two mana, and, uh, and you know the unearth in this deck. This deck is surprisingly, uh, surprisingly strong. You know, it doesn't look the greatest on paper. I mean, it just. It dies. It dies to Angular Gods, which is a common card. It can't beat a Triplicate Spirits or, or Young Pyromancer, pretty much. You know, so I mean, it's, it does have its weaknesses. It's not a top-tier deck by any stretch, but it's certainly uh, it's certainly tricky and, and capable of just you know putting out some fast damage and uh, evasive damage that the other opponent just can't deal with uh, deal with it in time. So uh, I have a lot of fun playing it. Actually, I really really enjoy this deck. First hand, uh, first opening hand, uh, one mana. Not exciting. Again, one mana. Three castable spells. <coughs> I got caught doing this before. I'm not going to do it again. Four mana on the play with Brackwater and Abidant. Not exciting, but I'd rather not go to five. You know, I'm on the play and I've got a three drop and then I can perhaps draw one card off this Abidant. I don't know. Hopefully we pick up two drop, but this hand is uh, this hand is very weak. Our opponent, Crippled Ninja 93, he's playing 60 cards. He has started off with a Cruel Sadist. It's just a 1 mana 1-1, one, one, but he can... Oh, I picked up a Dragger, at least I can cycle that. He can, uh, you know, put plus 1, plus 1 counters on it every turn. He has to pay a bit of life and a bit of mana for that. And, uh, and then he can use it as sort of removal. It's really slow. Um, I think the best use of the card, honestly, is just to put a single plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. And then you get a, uh, you know, a 1 mana 2-2. Two, two. Kind of not, you know, kind of a 2 mana 2-2, two, because two, you had to spend that second mana to... Uh, put into it but uh, you know now he's putting down a child of night <clears throat> to one life linking vampire so he's probably playing some kind of black white uh, vampire aggro deck I'm just gonna cycle the viscera dragger here draw a card picked up another dragger which is not bad which is not terrible but I'm just gonna drop my brackwater elemental into play and say here's a 4-4 you know next turn I'll probably just drop the Biden and swing at him and hope to uh, Hope that he doesn't block it, and then I draw a card, and uh, <clears> then <throat> I can start unearthing these guys, and you know, hopefully get some more Biden hits in. But our opponents play tribute to hunger, so he's just going to—he's just going to knock this guy into the graveyard, gain four life, and swing at me for three. So I'm not feeling particularly uh, excited about uh, my chances in this game, because now he's going to get me down to 16 and gain two more life, up to 26. <clears throat> Yeah, it's not the greatest thing in the world. Uh, so I guess right now, I guess right now, I, uh, I've got two unearth creatures in the graveyard. It cost me five mana to unearth them both. So I'm just going to jam the Bident into play. Um, take a turn off. 
Next turn I can play the Swamp, unearth both of them. Swing for seven and draw two cards if they hit. So we'll see. See what he does. He's on four mana. I imagine it's, you know, it's got to be a life gain deck. He's playing the Tribute to Hunger. He's playing Lone Missionary. He's playing, uh, so now he's up to 30 life. And he's tapping his Sadist rather than attack with it, so it's a 2-2 now. So that means he's on 20 life, 29 life instead of 30, like I said, because he had to pay one life to activate his Sadist. Swings into two, for 2, gets me to 14, and now he's up to 31. So yeah, life gain, wow. Um, it's going to be tough for me to break through this. So I guess for now, I'm just going to um, unearth both of these guys. Actually, I'm only going to unearth one of them. I want to hold open that Voyage's End, and then I'll cycle the Dragger if I don't need it. So I'm just going to come at him for four here. Hope he... he oh, I want him to take it just to draw the card more than anything, but no, he's going to jump block. Alright, so I'm just going to pass. Uh, you know, I'm not uh, feeling like I'm way fucking behind in this game. Way behind. So now he's up to five mana. We could see the, the Baneslayer Angels, Indulgent Tormentors, and all those nasty uh, those nasty five mana flyers that he has access to. It's a Battle Grace Angel. So the question is, do I want to bounce either one of those? Um, I just think I bounced the Battle Grace. I mean, I don't think I can win this game here, honestly. See another Voyage's in on top, and he's not land at this point in the game. I will... I will take it. Swing him with both guys. So, uh, yeah, we're in a bit of bad shape, though. Pretty bad shape here with our opponent on 33. I don't know how I'm going to power through that. Pretty much can't. So, uh, let's cycle this Viscera Dragger. Pay two blue. Yeah. This will draw us card, which is a Tide Hollow Strix. Which is actually, I was going to unearth both of these. But I think I'm going to only unearth one now. And, uh, and then I'm going to cast the Tide Hollow Strix, have a bit of permanent board presence, especially a Death Toucher. So this is going to draw us another card off the Bident. Yes, we will draw a card, it's another land, and uh, now I'm going to put the Strix into play. And uh, there goes the Dragger, back to Exile. So now our opponent on taps again on 5, we know he's got a Battle Grace in hand, but... He's up to six now. He's playing Covenant of Blood, so that's going to kill my dude. I think that's the seven mana Convoke, deal four damage, gain four life. Yeah. Yeah, it uh, deals four damage to target creature or player, and you gain four life. It's seven mana, but you can tap your creatures to pay some of that cost. Now he's getting in for two, gain two more. He's on 30 fucking six, man. You know. 30 fucking six life, and I draw another land. So let's... Uh, Let's just unearth this guy here. Swing at him and then get a Biden hit in and draw another card. Come on. I mean, I basically have no chance in hell of depleting him his 36 life here, so. Alright, so we'll draw a card, pick up a Shore Stalker, which is obviously not great. Which is obviously not great here. I'll put an island in play. I've got a bounce spell. You know. I will, uh, I will certainly block that child tonight and trade off here. Here comes the battle, Grace. And he's going to combat. I'm just going to bounce it again and have a look at the top of the library here. Scry one. See Strix, which I will keep. So he's bringing both of the guys here. I'm going to, I'm going to trade this off. He's down to two cards in his hand. You know, I guess I got that going for me. But anyways, let's just put these tricks into play. And uh, hold on to the swamp, because we've already got a million mana in play. I, I, <coughs> I assume now he's going to drop that Battle Grace again. Which he does, and he's down to one card in his hand. So that this... Uh, no, he's, he's emptied his hand now. And he's activating his Cruel Sadist, actually. That brings it up to a 3-3. Three, three. So I think, uh, I think I make his creatures attack next turn with the Bident. And bounce his, uh, bounce his Cruel Sadist. Kill his Battle Grace Angel. 
I guess. You know, I guess that's what I do. Okay, let's just pass it over. Let's pass it over, see what he picks up. Hopefully it's not uh, Covenant of the Blood or something. He picked up Mentor the Meek. So, he's activating his Sadist. Up to a 4-4. Four, four. Now he's going into combat, so now I'm going to force his creatures to attack with my Bident. That'll pick off his Battle Grace Angel. We're still going to take two, and he's going to gain two more. So we, uh, we really need the top of our deck to be kind to us here. So yeah, that'll pick off the Battle Grace. We're down to four. Now in his end step, I'm going to bounce this 4-4, four, four, because he can't replay it this turn to draw a card off Mentor. And picked up a Vapor Snag. I mean, that doesn't really do a whole lot. You know, I mean, I need to draw... I mean, there's not really much I can draw, to be perfectly honest, but the Vapor Snag is not going to be it. Picked up a Brackwater, so at least I can uh, drop that into play and, you know, force his mentor to attack me. He's going to draw a card when he casts his... Uh, he's going to draw a card when he casts his Sadist because of the mentor is meek. Which is pretty, uh, which is pretty annoying. So that comes back in, triggers mentor. He draws a card, now he's up to two in hand. Plays a land, and he's got one final card. So com he moves to the combat step. Again, we're going to force him to attack. Pick off that mentor. It's unfortunate that Brackwater goes away when it uh, when it blocks, because I could just keep picking off his creatures turn after turn after turn. But unfortunately, I can't do that. If he's got another Covenant to Blood, I'm dead, because that can go to the face. So he's going to ulcerate. He's going to ulcerate. Okay. Well, why not? I guess he keeps his mentor. Yeah. Okay. Well, that fucking sucks. Not gonna lie. I mean, I was basically dead a very, very long time ago. Yeah, so that's the game. That is the game. All right, well, then, you know, that's an ignominious defeat. You know, my opponent got up to nearly 40 life there. But anyways, that was it. We had two games where we curved out and another game where our opponent just uh, beat the fuck out of us with life gain. <laughs> it happens. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you for another gameplay tomorrow.